every word in Sanskrit has a meaning. Not just every word, every alphabet has a meaning. A, A, E, E, in fact the very first alphabet A represents Lord Vishnu. Lord Krishna in Bhagavad Gita says, Akshara Anam Akarosmi. I am the Akshara A. So every alphabet has a meaning and every word is derived from a verb in Sanskritam which makes the language extremely structured. In fact, a lot of names that we know about are derived from the verbs. For example, Ram is the root from where Rama is derived, which means the very word Rama gives us so much of happiness and hence Lord Rama is addressed to as Rama. Similarly, Karshati, Krishnaha, the one who is all attractive is Krishna. Harati, the one who snatches away all sins is Lord Hari. So a lot of these are called as verbal derivatives. We derive these words from the verbs and these are the simplest form of the words that we can have. Going forward, we have words which can be derived from another noun itself. So from a name, we can derive another name which is very interesting. For example, in English we say Dasharatha's son is Rama. In Sanskritam, we can just say Dasharatihi which means Dasharatha's son. Similarly, Vasudeva, Vasudeva's son. We have Arjuna's other name which is Partha. Prita's son is Partha. This is not just for the names. We can have the entire lineage explained like this. For example, Raghava means Lord Rama was born in the Ragu dynasty. Therefore, he is called as Raghava. Vashneya, Vrishni Kule Jata Vashneya. So, he was born in the Vrishni Kula. So, he is called as Vashneya. So, a lot of these derivations are possible in Sanskrit. This is not just about relationships. Also, based on what they possess, we can have them have their unique names. Lord Vishnu has Chakra with him. So, he is addressed to as Chakran. Just by saying Chakran, we know that this Lord has Chakra with him. Gadin, the one who has Gada. He sports the Vanamala. He is called as Vanamalin. And these need not be tangible physical attributes. We also address Lord as Yogin because he possesses Yoga. So, he is called as Yogin. So, a lot of these beautiful derivations are possible in Sanskritam. We have compound words which are two or more words joined together which create a beautiful name with a meaning. For example, Deva we know is the Lord. Gods are called as Devas. Now, Devas Natha, Natha is the leader, becomes Devanatha which is the Lord of all gods. This again is a name by itself. Similarly, Jagannatha, the Lord of the universe is a unique name by itself. These can also be functional names depending on what they exactly do. For example, Varam Dadati, Varadaha, the Lord who bestows all boons to us is called as Varada. We are now familiar with Atti Varada, right? He comes only once in 40 years outside water and all of us had the opportunity of knowing about Atti Varada this year. So, Varam Dadati, Varadaha. Gam Vindati Govindaha, the one who protects earth or protects the cows is called as Govinda. So these can be functional names depending on what actually a person does or knows, uh, so on and so forth. We have yet another category of compound words which makes the whole thing even more interesting. For example, we can have an entire story abridged into a word in Sanskritam by using these compound words. For example, Pitambara, the one who is adorned with yellow color attire, yellow color cloth. Now, this is very unique to Sanskritam because so many people can wear a yellow dress. So, why is wearing a yellow color cloth is a identity for Lord Vishnu? This is because it is explained very well in our scriptures that Lord Brahma, soon after all the creation was done, meditates on the Lord who created him and the vision he got had the Lord wearing a yellow color attire and therefore Lord Vishnu is addressed to as Pitambara. The same uh, explanation is given when the baby was born, Lord Krishna was born and he was not born like any other child, he was born along with a yellow color dress on him. So the unique identity of Lord Krishna is Pitambara. 
we have another very nice name which is called as Padmanab. This kind of name can never be seen anywhere in the world, only in Bharatam, only in Sanskritam. Padmanabha means the one who has lotus on his navel. Now, what do we understand from this? We can understand one entire story from this because in Bhagavadam, the entire creation is identified with Brahmandas. Many Brahmandas make up a creation and inside each Brahmanda, we have the uh, Garbhotaka Vishnu who lies on the serpent and from whose navel, uh, you know, the stem of the navel goes all the way to the Brahma Loka, the lotus is there on which the Brahma gets created. Which means the navel of Vishnu is below all the 14 worlds because Krishna uh, resides below in that water, in the Garbhodaka, in the Brahmanda's water. And the stem connects all the 14 worlds all the way to the uh, abode of Brahma, which is Satyaloga, which is the first uh, uh, world. So the Padmanabha connects these dots for us. The next beautiful identifier because of these compound words that we get is Dhamodara. Dhamodara means Dhamam Udare, the one who has rope on his stomach. Now, what do we understand from this name? This again elaborates into a beautiful story which is in Bhagavatam. Lord Krishna during his uh, childhood taunts plays around and uh, he steals butter, he gets caught with uh, all these gopikas who go complain to mother Eshoda. Mother Eshoda, in an attempt to discipline her child, ties Lord Krishna to a mortar. Now the Padmanabha, which we just saw, whose uh, navel is the creation itself from where Lord Brahma, the creator of all the worlds have come, now allows himself to be tied by the love of her mother, the love of his mother. She ties him with a rope to a mortar. So that beauty is denoted by Dhamam Udaram. So the uh, uh, rope is tied to this little Krishna. Therefore, he is called as Dhamodara. In fact, if you go to many temples, you can still see a mole on the stomach of the Lord, which shows that he was Dhamodara because he was so happy with the devotion, the love, the affection of his mother that he permitted himself to be tied to a mortar. So these kind of compound words can actually shrink this entire episode into a beautiful name. Just by knowing the name, we can identify with the Leelas of the Lord, with the greatness of the Lord, etc. And Sanskritam has yet another unique thing where we can have adjectives added to nouns to create new words. For example, in Venkateshwara Suprabhata, we know Uttishta Narasardula, which means Narasardula. Shardula means tiger. Narasardula means tiger among men. This is actually like a simile. It's called Upama. So tiger here just means it's the best of men. So Narasardula means best among men. So also we have Purushar Shabha. Rishabha means bull. Purushar Shabha means the bull among men. Again, it uh, explains that he is the best among men. We are familiar with the name Ramachandra. So Rama, who is cool, calm, composed, beautiful, like Chandra. All these are similes which are used, you know, uh, many times in Sanskritam to identify the greatness of a particular person, to give um, similes, metaphors are very common in Sanskrit Bhasha. Now we can have words which are derived from words, which are in turn derived from words, making a very complex word, which gives absolute beauty and brevity. For example, we know the Lord Parthasaradi. Prita is the name of a person who gave birth to Arjuna. So Arjuna's mother's name is Prita. Therefore, Arjuna is called as Partha. Now, because Lord Krishna drove the chariot to Arjuna, Krishna is called as Partha Saradi. So from Partha, from Prita we come to Partha, from Partha we go to Partha Saradi, which becomes a beautiful name. Similarly, Mura is a Asura. Now by uh, Mura's enemy is called as Mura Ri. Ari means enemy. So because the Lord killed the Asura by name Mura, he is addressed to as Murari. Similarly, Madhusudana. Madhu was a Asura, the one who fought and won Madhu is actually called as Madhusudana. These words are derived by 
combining a lot of complex words and creating a whole new word. So, what happens is we name a person as Partha Sarathi because we want to name him based on Lord Krishna's name. But in our regular life, we address him as Partha, which means instead of addressing Lord Krishna, we start addressing him as Arjuna. So, Murari, instead of Murari, when we call the person as Mura, we are actually looking at him as a demon rather than as Lord Krishna. So, Sanskritam has this beauty, the brevity, it has structure, it can uh, give a lot of uh, spice to the way we communicate and long statements, paragraphs can be com uh, compiled into a simple word making a very enjoyable experience for us.